So I'll be briefly presenting the sustainable development goals, particularly challenges and opportunities for implementation in the context of India. <clears throat> you know, <clears throat> for decades, uh, the developmental, the global developmental agenda, uh, you know, uh, it was built on very pious and I should say copious declarations, conventions, frameworks, etc. And the Millennium, Devel Millennium Development Goals, <clears throat> it marks a paradigm shift in, in that the global community agreed on certain clear goals, certain targets, and indicators. And the relative success of some of these, in achieving some of these goals uh, during 2000 2015, it encouraged the leaders uh, to be more ambitious, and they call it supremely ambitious and transformational vision of the future we want, <clears throat> that the General Assembly declared. And these are the sustainable development goals. So these goals <clears throat> that in the, you know India performed uh, this MDGs uh, with a mixed bag of success. India actually did not uh, adopt uh, or endorse all the MDGs. It modified the MDGs to suit its specific context. And India achieved out of the 18 targets that it, uh, it endorsed. I think four uh, targets they achieved. The from five targets, uh, they were mixed. Uh, they were moderate, moderately achieved. Failed to achieve two, two targets and one target. Uh, it could not uh, discern it because of statistical difficulties. But contrarily, we find in the SDGs scheme, the India <clears throat> fully embraced the NDGs, SDGs, and not only that, uh, India took a very proactive and leading role in the formulations of these SDGs. I think some of the new development uh, missions of India, like Clean India, like Make in India, Digital India, Skill India, Smart Cities program, and these are uh, some of these uh, goals of these programs have remarkable uh, similarities with some of the SDGs goals. Now, MDGs, uh, they say that the uh, that the MDG success was uh, largely due to you know China's super rapid growth. And uh, the success of the SDGs would depend much on India. So the lot of focus is now in India, how India is going to uh, plan the implementation of these SDGs. Look at the SDGs, <clears throat> there are 17 SDGs, and the eight of these SDGs, you know, these are based on uh, the foundations laid by the MDGs, you know, the eight M uh, Millennium Development Goals. But these uh, scopes of these, of these, of these goals are substantially broadened and, uh, and the coverage is also broadened. broadened. For example, in the MDG said that, uh, the, uh, that it will reduce extreme poverty by half by 2015. SDG further broadened it, broadened it and said that, uh, that they will be ending poverty in every form, everywhere, in all forms of poverty. Similarly, if you look at the goal of the education, MDG was that that it will uh, have it will make universal uh, it will ensure universal primary education. But SDG broadened it that the quality education and inclusive education for all lifelong education. So there is a substantial broadening of the scope and the coverage of the MDGs. There are uh, at least nine goals you know which were uh, not there in the MDG. The, uh, which are added in the SDGs, and we find that three of these goals related to economic development, sustainable economic growth, decent employment, the resilient infrastructure, industrialization, and reducing inequality among and within the countries, and within the countries and among the countries. At least six goals were new aspects of sustainable development, which are not there in the Millennium Development Goal, were added, like sustainable cities, sustainable production and consumption, combating climate change, the sustainable use of ocean, seas, and marine resources, sustainable ecosystem like forests, natural resources, biodiversity, etc. So <clears throat> this was the architecture of these SDGs. We find this, this, this ambitious, the vision was so ambitious, and so these are very, very complex and very difficult to achieve. Uh, we have 169 targets on the 17 goals, but what is going to be the indicators? That's not yet decided. There is an interagency expert group uh, which are now working on the indicators, and I'm associated with that group. And we are finding it extremely developed to develop to develop uh, difficult to develop the targets on these and the indicators on these targets because 
data sets on some of these targets are not available in most of the countries. So this is going to be a very, very tough and challenging task. You know, MDGs <coughs> were focused on meeting the basic needs of the people, but we don't find that there is a common goal, what we call a meta goal for the SDGs. You know, the SDG goals somewhere stand alone, and the, the interlinkages with the goals uh, are not very well defined. You know, sometimes, you know, some of the goals are such that if you have to achieve the goal, then it may impact on the other goals. So some of the goals may not be exactly complementary. This may be conflicting. So the linkages, the trade-offs among the goals are also not uh, very well defined in the SDGs. Uh, we find that this, uh, you know, Millennium Development Goals uh, uh, were, um, were is applicable mostly to the developing countries, whereas SDGs is a universal application for the world as a whole. So these are no doubt very, very challenging. But the challenges would be more particular in the context of the India because of the you know, magnitude and the scale of the problems of India. India has already started with the backlog you know, of the MDGs, there are MDG gaps of backlogs that we have started with that. And we find that, uh, that as, as, it, as it is that we, we have not clearly defined, there is a clear roadmap of how these SDGs would be implemented in India. First of all, the financial resources. The recent study has indicated that India would need about uh, US uh, $8.5 trillion in 15 years for implementing these SDGs, which means an annually about $565 US dollars. Uh, how these resources are going to come? Certainly these are not going to come from the budgetary allocations uh, so this has to be raised to the innovative market mechanisms, uh, to the public-private uh, partnership and other measures, but we do not know as yet how this is going to be done. Similarly, the implementation mechanisms. So we have the five-year plans of the Planning Commission, or the Planning Commission has been dismantled. A lot of functions of this, uh, which the central government was doing through the state, uh, centrally sponsored schemes were transferred to these states. So we do not know that how the states are going to implement it. And mind you, some of the states of India are very, very large states. There are 13 states of India which are more populated than 75% uh, of the countries of the world. And each state has its own unique, unique problems and difficulties, so you have to find a state-specific solutions. So you do not have the state-specific roadmaps or the plans or the action plans for the implementation of the sustainable development goals as yet. So, but at the same time, we find that there are huge opportunities before India. Because India is now the fastest growing large economy in the world. And India's economic growth has uh, overtaken that of China. And if so if India is able to maintain its rate of growth, you know, 8 to 9% or even double digit growth during the next decade and a half, uh, then certainly this growth will create its momentum. It will generate employment and it will improve the purchasing power, the standard of living to people and prove and and, 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 and create a vast differences in our situations of poverty, of malnutrition, of illiteracy, or ill health. In all these sectors, there will be a drastic improvement, as we have seen in China. They did it last one and a half decade. So, uh, and the another thing is that India has uh, also set its own goals, goals up to 2022. What we call as the, you know, the uh, 2022 is the 75th year of our anniversary and the government has set an ambitious plan for achieving certain goals like housing for all, like energy for all, like water and sanitation for all houses, like uh, uh, like road connectivity to all villages, like digital connectivity to. Uh, so these are some of the missions which we find that are remarkable similarities with the sustainable development goals. So I think if India is able to achieve all these uh, you know missions that uh, it has embarked and if in India is able to uh, maintain and sustain its uh, rate of economic growth. So there are good chances that we would be able to implement some of these goals. But as I've already said, that many of the goals are not very well defined. The targets are rather vague. In fact, there was a study of the, uh, of the International Council for the Science and also International Council for Social Science. And they said that out of the 169 targets, there are about 29% of these targets which are well defined. About 46% of the targets, these are rather vague. And, and the remaining targets, they said about 20% of the targets, these are not uh, very well framed. So these will be some of the challenges. I mean, the, 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 the goals are very vague, targets are not very well defined, and data sets on how these targets will be, you know, in, uh, will be monitored. 
So these are some of the challenges we will we'll face. But I think in so far the some of these goals which are which are clear and specific targets. So and uh, there is a little bit of you know convergence with our national development missions, and we would be able to achieve it. So so there will be challenges, there are opportunities, but but it is going to be a very very uh, difficult task, no doubt. Thank you. A very good evening to all of you. <clears throat> my previous speaker, Dr. Chakraborty, had made my life very easy in terms of understanding the sustainable development goals. I will be briefly dealing with the SDGs and the health India perspective. This will be the outline of the presentation. So before moving forward, it is very much appropriate to just look back and see what we have achieved so far in the MDGs. So we'll briefly go through it. As far as goal one is concerned, so uh, the India has achieved the poverty headcount ratio lowering to uh, that uh, as per target. But if you see the poverty gap ratio and the share of the poorest quantile, the major differential is there with respect to the rural and the urban strata and the Indian population. With respect to the challenges, there is uh, uneven progress with respect to various poverty indicators. As far as the hunger is concerned, we are still battling with the undernutrition and we are not going to meet our target, which is scheduled for the MDGs. And there is also a differential growth experience at state and sub-state level. Also, there is a rising inequalities. And most importantly, the concentration of the extreme poverty at various status, including the caste level, and also the households where the females are the head of the households are, are dealing with the extreme poverty in India. Coming to the goal two, achievements. So we have achieved in terms of achieving the youth literacy percentage as per the MDG target, almost we are near to it. The, the challenge as far as goal two is concerned is the net enrollment rate. So our uh, children are not enrolling to the schools properly. And also there is a huge amount of dropout when we see the move from grade one to grade five. And most of them fail to complete their primary education. And of course, the quality of the education is a big uh, matter of concern as far as uh, uh, achieving universal primary education is concerned. In the goal three, that is uh, promote gender equality and empowering women. We are almost there to achieve the gender parity index in gross enrollment ratios and youth liter literacy as far as males and females are concerned. As far as challenges goes, Women social economic stability to the women is lacking in India in terms of their women's share in the wage employment is very low and it is unlikely to meet the MDG target. If you see the goal four, uh, which is respect to the child mortality, we are we are again faltering on this goal, uh, which is as far as IMR and the uh, under five mortality is there. Complete immunization, that is measles immunization at the age of one year, still we are lagging behind as far as the MDG is concerned. Goal five, with respect to the maternal mortality rate, again we are lagging behind with respect to the estimate, if we see the estimated figures for 2015, we are so much behind uh, as per the target. This maternal mortality is closely related with the births attended by the skilled personnel at the, uh, the time of delivery. We are uh, faring uh, very good in terms of attending uh, this target. Over the years, the India shows good progress attributed to its various missions, particularly National Health Mission, uh, which is leading to the infrastructure development and uh, health human workforce management at the primary care level. With respect to the goal six, uh, which deals with uh, HIV AIDS, there is a st uh, stable trend over the years and a declining trend. The epidemic is mostly concentrated, HIV epidemic is mostly concentrated in the high risk groups. Also, HIV prevalence over the years also declined. And this trend is also reflected at the state level too. With respect to malaria, there is a, a decline in the annual, annual parasite index and also we are half the API as per the target. The deaths are also declined, but the isolated epidemics in various geographical areas. For example, in 2006 in Assam, contributing to the almost uh, more than 20% of the deaths in that particular year. So that is a cause of concern with respect to the malaria. With respect to tuberculosis, we have almost stable trends uh, of incidence, prevalence, and the mortality of the, uh, due to tuberculosis. With respect to environmental stability, goal seven, the forest cover has been increased uh, from 
which is almost 21% of the entire country and it is a uh, increase of almost five more than 5000 square kilometers of forest cover the cfc consumption has decreased steadily to uh, to ensure the sustainable environment since 2008 goal 7 that is uh, assessing the drinking water and sanitation the drinking water we have achieved the goal in terms of uh, in doubling the household with access to improved water source and but in, with respect to the sanitation almost 43.4% of household at all india level have no latrine facilities and this grossly differs in the rural and the urban strata almost 60% in rural uh, strata rural population has no access to the sanitation as compared to 8 per 9 per almost 9% in urban area so we are faltering big way in this uh, achieving this mdg target with respect to goal 8 uh, the overall uh, india has fared uh, very well with respect to achieving the tele density and the internet connection per 1000 population so as far as summary goes uh, of mdg so we are on track with respect to target 1 of eradicating extreme poverty but almost off track when it comes to the uh, hunger and uh, undernutrition among uh, under 3 years children universal immunization we are on the track uh moderately on the track and gender equality we are on track uh reducing the child mortality moderately we are reaching there but with respect to the maternal health we are uh, uh moving way back with respect to the target combating hiv aids due to the push from the developmental agencies and the national program we are moving ahead and achieving the target and with respect to other tuberculosis uh, and other disease morbidities the we are having the stable trend over the years but there is isolated outbreaks and the issues with the program with if we concern the tuberculosis Uh, previous speaker dr chakravarty already discussed what are the difference between the mdgs and the sdgs just to uh, somewhat uh, summate it in the one uh, one line we can say sdgs are uniting the world with the broader sustainable and the developmental agenda sdgs and health what are the india perspective broadly uh, as mentioned by dr chakravarty the most of the indicators are not well defined and few of them are well defined with the targets uh, targets are defined so uh, with respect to health there are 13 targets so starting from the, uh, most of them are continued from the uh, mdgs the added thing are uh, is a non communicable disease they say the reduce a one third mortality by uh, non communicable disease the road traffic accidents having the number that's a ambitious target universal health coverage the sdg talks about achieving universal health coverage in the developing countries then the important part the aspect which have of health which has included is air pollution the various uh, deaths and morbidities associated with the contamination of air water and soil has been included as it one of the target uh, with respect to health then implementation uh, the substance abuse got very much uh, importance in the sdgs they uh, uh, they are talking about the uh, tobacco control and the other substance abuse uh, uh, control then the innovation with respect to the vaccine development and the implementation and the various newer medicines for the communicable and non communicable diseases found a place as a target in the sdgs there is also have focus or mention brief uh, grossly about the increase in the financing and health workforce development particularly in the developing countries and last but not the least and very important though the, the sdg talks about developing the early warning uh, systems and risk reduction and management of national uh, global health risk yeah coming back to presentation Uh, so uh, looking at the various state level those particular ag states they are faring very poor as far as the decline in the maternal mortality is, uh, is concerned and the southern states are doing pretty well so we if we need to if we need to achieve the sdgs at various status the state has to take a lead and work accordingly compared and the matter the institutional deliveries or the birth attended by the skill uh, help personnel is a important determinant of the reducing maternal mortality ratio so uh, you can see in this graph that if we increase it to the particular uh, level that is if we achieve the universal institutional delivery the maternal mortality ratio target is not far away as compared uh, if you see the child mortality neonatal mortality we are again uh, on the track if we follow if we similar trend continues uh, as for the estimates so we can able to achieve the target of 12 uh, neonatal mortality in the 2030 as far as the under 5 mortality is concerned we can achieve the target of 19 as compared to 25 in 2025 the national target will be achieved in 2013 but 
the challenge will be that to achieve the target at the state level given the diverse state conditions as described by my previous speaker you can see in this graph there is a differential uh, levels in the urban and rural strata differential level as per the genders so so we need to understand all these factors to uh, achieve the sdgs the under five mortality also differs at the state uh, various states so there are larger states which are uh, faltering and uh, to achieve the target of the under five mortality they need uh, they need a uh, special focus to achieve national target as comp uh, if you see the ch uh, child immunization again it has a differential with so continue with the presentation uh, as far as the hiv or aids epidemic is concerned as as said before this, there is a stable trend and the epidemic is more concentrated in high risk groups the we are the few states like example manipur where the, the general population has a higher prevalence of hiv and aids as far as the tuberculosis is concerned the various indicators are uh, stagnant they are showing a stagnant trend over the years but the reemergence of the disease is possibility is there due to the various lapses in the program there is increasing prevalence of the drug resistant tuberculosis which is going to be a big pub public health problem as far as the tuberculosis is concerned also the comorbid conditions associated with the tuberculosis like diabetes mellitus and the hiv also posing a big uh, challenge to the health system malaria as i said we have a decreasing trends with respect to the incidence as well as the deaths due to malaria is concerned but we also need to control uh, the isolated outbreaks which are posing the challenge to the health system the non communicable diseases uh, the india being the now uh, the capital of most of the non communicable diseases if you see in the absolute numbers they are in the uh, they are showing a rising trends then ncds that is non communicable disease are the leading cause of death in india almost 42% of all deaths are uh, due to the ncds also the risk factors like uh, uh, inadequate physical activity smoking to, uh, tobacco consumption unhealthy diets these are also prevalent uh, as observed in the various surveys in india india is a party to the comprehensive global ncd monitoring framework adopted by the world health assembly and he uh, india also agreed to provide indicators and progress over 10 ncd targets and 21 indicators recommended for india to monitor the uh, the progress on this program rta road traffic accident again a major public health problem if you see sheer number they are huge so uh, in uh, there is every uh, one minute there is an accident and death every 8 minute if we see the number as such there is a more this is a more frequent cause of death in young population that is from 5 to 14 years of age the major causes of rta are the growing population increasing number of vehicles on the road poor road conditions and disregard to the traffic rules and the regulation and morbidity and mortality due to rta is a major challenge in india and is also a part of sdg now the other sdgs which are indirectly related to health are the no poverty uh, the in uh, that is goal 1 that is no poverty which has as stated by the previous speaker aim to eradicate extreme poverty and to reduce at least half of all uh, poverty in all ages irrespective of the sex uh, irrespective of age living across the world then zero hunger it is also related to the health as such so it aims to achieve no hungry people and elimination of the under nutrition in all ages so this is going to be a challenge as far as india is concerned and agriculture reforms meeting the need of the population including including the various innovations and the genetically modified crops also gender equity uh, equality again associated with the health uh, indirectly so it aims at ending the all forms of discrimination eliminate all forms of violence against uh, women effective participation and equal opportunities which is lacking in terms of uh, if we concern uh, if we say in terms of india the women are lacking in terms of taking decisions at the political social level and universal access to sexual and reproductive health and their reproductive rights uh, by deciding their to decide their families family size etc need to be need more push in, in india the goal 6 that is clean water and sanitation is very much related to the health uh, and again india is faltering as i said before with respect to achieving the adequate sanitation and uh, reducing water pollution and maintaining ecosystem of water these are important targets and very uh, necessary to to which are included in the sdgs climate action the important uh, again uh, important goal which is included uh, in the sdg the india is again facing Uh, in line with the world the challenge of uh, changing climate there is need to develop a strengthening resilience and adaptive capacity the integration 
integration of the climate change in the policy and planning is as envisaged in the SDG. Awareness generation. I think India is at lying at this first stage. That is, there is a need to create awareness in India and commitment from the developing countries, uh, including India, is needed. So what are the linkages of environment and health in SDGs at India perspective we can see here? There are uh, almost six uh, indicators which are related to environment, which are included in the SDGs. So that uh, found a very much space there. If you see the environmental challenges in India, so percentage of household without access to sanitation, if you see the urban and the rural part, there is a big differential uh, in, in this particular uh, indicator. That is source of drinking water, so we are improving over the years in respect to uh, increasing the coverage of the safe water by the pipe water supply and the tap water supply. Then housing and urban health there is a big issue with respect to growing slum and the increasing urbanization in India. The percentage population of slum household is almost 23%. And if you see the health indicators of uh, population uh, residing in the urban slum and the rural population, they are more worse than the rural population. So they, the slum population living in the urban area need to be given more attention. Then as far as the uh, CO2 emission is concerned, the, uh, uh, in line with the other developing, uh, developed countries, so there is increase in the CO2 uh, emission in India too. Then per capita energy consumption is also on the increasing trend. The fuel use for cooking, the solid fuel uh, use while co uh, during cooking is uh, showing a decreasing trend. It's as an encouraging uh, sign, but still it is uh, substantial. numbers are substantial. The third environmental challenge we see as a strengthening the capacity of all, that is one of the target, in particular developing countries, for early warning, risk reduction, and management of national and global health risk. Given the recent situation in Chennai and the previous in Uttarakhand, we are seeing India is more prone due to the climate change and other issues to the natural calamities and disasters. So there is a need for uh, developing cap capacity building and developing a system to manage these disasters and to have a, uh, to develop a mitigation measures and epidemic preparedness is essential then there is another target to substantially reduce the number of deaths and illness from the hazardous chemical air water and soil pollution and the contamination in the sdg so improving air quality is going to become a major challenge and strengthening public health transport system use of clean fuel and solid waste management are the way forward and also posing a big challenge if we see what are the way forwards, that is challenges, and what are the hopes for India, which are the challenges, challenge is continuing the progress. The MDG has shows us the path, so we have to finish the agenda which we have undertaken at the time of MDG. The strengthening the critical development drivers such as economic growth, industrialization, employment creation, and a reduction in inequality within. Then differential development across the states, urban rural, be it vulnerable population, urban slum, they are the posing a bigger challenge and differential uh, development at the subnational level, at state level, district level, because India is a combination of various countries within. So each state, each uh, district has its peculiarity to achieve the various targets. Challenges: poverty and hunger. So one in every five percent in India is below poverty line still, and one in every uh, children, uh, three children below three years is underweight children. So it's a shame, as uh, said by our last prime minister. And hence, the eradication of the poverty and the hunger is a priority in India. Women empowerment and the gender equality. Though we are faring well with respect to the various indicators, but if we consider the indicators like social empowerment and the economic empowerment, we are lagging way behind. There is a low proportion of women working in the decent jobs outside agriculture. There is a low participation in overall labor force and declining in the rural areas particularly. Lack of land ownership, poor representation in the parliament. So women are lacking in India with respect to, to decision taking and the uh, economic stability in, in India. Also, we are also facing the uh, challenge of skewed sex ratio uh, due to the sex selection at the time of birth. Uh, with the challenges, there are hopes too. Uh, the hopes are we have to, as I said at the beginning of my presentation, we have to learn lessons from the MDGs. So what MG, MDG taught us that there are some drivers which can drive the development at various levels. So economic growth at the state level, handholding of the weaker and the poor performing states and emulating the good performing states. 
third the investing in the nutrition health and education and there is no other option for uh, to this investment good governance to uh, for the equitable distribution of the resources effective delivery of the public services particularly to the vulnerable population through the pds through the midday meal uh, all this thing is needed then expansion of the basic infrastructure that is road transport uh, electricity and power promoting gender equality and women empowerment these are the drivers of the development as far as india is concerned in the recent year we are seeing the renewed political commitment in the term of in the form of national health mission which includes a national urban health mission which has a component of infrastructure development at the urban area like in the rural area beti bachao beti padhao to uh, increase the uh, gender related awareness the social inclusion scheme jandan yojana food security act the employment guarantee scheme this government also continued the employment guarantee scheme which has a very social impact at the particular in the vulnerable population promotion of the renewable energy in the in the time of uh, scarcity of resources this will prove a very effective intervention swachh bharat and the smart city are again in the line with the uh, uh, sdgs and electrification of the villages again the basic infrastructure which is needed for the development india also have the demographic dividend to achieve the the uh, development goals and opportunity for the economic growth is also high in india so hopes are still high uh, given the challenges are there uh, one thing is there that sustainable development globally cannot be achieved without india thank you so much briefly summarize the links between health and environmental sustainability through the sdgs um i think the previous speaker in his very comprehensive excellent presentation has really um given you many of the key messages so i'm just going to uh pull out some some issues which uh i think are relevant from a global perspective so slide number 2 um shows you the environmental trends what we've seen is on a global scale a dramatic improvement in human health over the last few decades so uh we've seen for example an improvement in global life expectancy of about 20 years over the last few decades a great drop in under 5 mortality um on a global scale but this has um been done undertaken at a, a large cost in terms of the environment so what we've seen is a dramatic escalation of deforestation as shown on, shown on this slide with uh, a global forest loss of about 30% compared with a baseline of the pre-industrial era we've seen a dramatic increase in water shortage so that about 3 billion people on a global scale um are living in areas where affected by water shortage and in some cases a growing number of people affected by extreme shortages and that will have big implications for food production because much of that water is used for irrigation purposes ocean acidification the oceans are becoming more acid because carbon dioxide is dissolving in the oceans and that will have as yet not fully understood effects on marine ecosystems but it will affect for example um the capacity of shellfish to form their shells and affect potentially affect marine food chain climate change we know that uh, temperatures have increased by about 1 degree centigrade from a pre-industrial era and depending on the agreement in the next few days in paris we may end up with perhaps a 3 degree increase in temperature uh, by the end of the century that's 3 degrees on average so over the land that would be more than 3 degrees and of course this has all been accompanied by a decrease in biodiversity a species loss of perhaps 100 fold 100 times greater than um pre um industrial times so as we've already heard um these um environmental trends will affect human health and indeed are affecting human health and um we have outlined these in the report of the Lancet Planetary Commission Planetary Health Commission which was published just before the summer in the Lancet Medical Journal and is available free of charge open access if you look on the Lancet website so what are the implications for human health and how do these link to uh, the sustainable development goals well as we've already heard goal number 2 is around um ending hunger achieving food security can you go on to the next slide please that's slide number 3 achieving food security and improve nutrition and promoting sustainable agriculture and that involves uh, ambitious targets to end all forms of malnutrition including achieving internationally agreed targets on stunting and wasting in children under 5 
and um, increasing, doubling the agricultural productivity, uh, particularly of, of small-scale farmers, many of whom are women. So there is a major challenge, particularly, could I have slide number four, please, particularly in the light of the impacts of climate and other environmental changes on food production. And slide number four gives you an overview of some of the model changes in cereal grain yields to 2050. And what you can see is that in many countries, particularly in tropical and subtropical regions, there are likely to be big reductions in uh, yield, grain yields, uh, over the next few decades. There may be some increases in more temperate countries, but beyond the middle of the century, even those increases cannot be depended on. And this slide may well be conservative because it doesn't take into account all the environmental pressures on food systems. But what it implies is that we may see a reversal of the recent trends in improvement in nutrition, and we could see a reversal, for example, an increase in the number of children stunted and so on. We also know that there are changes in the nutrient quality of food because of carbon dioxide um, uh, affecting the growth of plants that may stimulate the growth of some types of crops, but at the same time changes their nutritional quality. So we're um, likely to see reductions in micronutrient levels, for example, in plants. So there are major challenges to SDG number two because of the environmental trends that we're currently experiencing, not just climate change, but also decreases in um, biodiversity, uh, loss of pollinator species like bees and other uh, species which are essential in many parts of the world for producing the crops that we humans um, uh, consume. So developing more resilient and lower environmental impact food production systems will be crucial. And we know, of course, that um, a lot of the problems are being driven by the increased demand in animal products, which happened as many societies uh, develop you get an increased demand for animal products. And it is those uh, animal products which are particularly damaging to the environment, uh, causing uh, many of the greenhouse gas emissions, but also uh, driving biodiversity. Um, in part because when we feed crops to animals, of course, there's inefficiencies, conversion inefficiencies um, in that process. Could you move on to slide five, please? As we've already heard from uh, previous speakers, uh, goal number three is very much focusing on health care. Quite rightly, it promotes universal health coverage. Uh, but you can also see that there are a number of environmentally relevant uh, targets within that broad goal, including reducing the number of deaths from pollution, and air pollution, of course, is the most important, but also halving the number of global deaths and injuries from road traffic accidents, which are to a considerable degree related to the increased demand for private cars. And so we need to move towards cities which emphasize public transport, um, both affordable buses, low emission vehicles, and light rail systems, for example, to reduce the number of road traffic injuries in cities and also reduce air pollution. Slide number six, please. Um, household air pollution, of course, in India, you're very familiar with this as a, as a public health problem. But on a global scale, about 4 million deaths a year are attributable to household air pollution. And about 90% of this burden of disease is due to non-communicable diseases. So household air pollution is a major risk factor for chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, as shown in this slide, stroke, and heart disease. So... Um, it's also a risk factor for lung cancer and for acute lower respiratory infections in children. So um, introducing uh, low emission, clean cooking solutions, whether that be through uh, connection to affordable electricity generation, using low cost, for example, induction hobs for cooking, or whether it be um, due to the introduction of uh, liquefied petroleum gas, which is a fossil fuel, but is a low emission fossil fuel. Um, there are a number of different technologies which can address some of the needs for clean cooking solutions and can reduce the burden of uh, 4.3 million deaths a year due to household air pollution. Outdoor air pollution is also um, a major killer, as we know, and, and you're well aware of this, of course, I know in India. But on a global scale, about 3.7 million deaths were attributed to ambient or outdoor air pollution exposure 
fine particulate exposure um, in recent years. And again, you can see that this is a major risk factor for the common non-communicable diseases, ischemic heart disease, uh, stroke, pulmonary disease, um, and lung cancer. And so introducing um, new technologies, renewable energy, moving away from coal towards natural gas as a transitional fuel, um, and then obviously ultimately moving towards renewable energy technologies, uh, both wind and solar, are important um, components of any strategy to reduce outdoor air pollutions. I would just say that you can't just add together these two um, causes of death due to air pollution because there's some overlap between them. So the overall number of deaths globally from air pollution is probably around uh, 7 million, but a major contributor uh, to non-communicable diseases. Goal six, as we've already heard, is um, about ensuring availability and sustainable management of water and sanitation for all. And we know that, of course, the very large numbers of pe people are still def defecating in the open, creating public health hazards. But we also know, um, moving on to slide number eight and then slide number nine, um, that many people are living in countries and areas where there's increasing water stress. And there's a number of reasons for that. A map is shown in slide number seven of areas where there's high water stress uh, or extremely high water stress, where in extremely high water stress, there is an 80%, more than 80% ratio of withdrawals to supply. So this means that for these countries, and you can see that there are many countries, um, India is overall a high stress country. Some neighboring countries are either high stress or extremely high stress. You can see that this is due to um, a combination, really, of stresses. Um, some of it is due to the exploitation of aquifers, which is uh, essentially um, fossil water, which cannot be replenished on human life scales, uh, lifetimes, and also because of climate change itself. So we know that climate change will increase precipitation in parts of the world, but also will decrease it in other parts of the world in other, se in other seasons. So... Um, this suggests that uh, these water stress will get worse in years to come unless we put in place uh, strategies to conserve water, to make much more efficient use of water um, than we have uh, recently. Um, it's also true to say that in some coastal areas due to sea level rise, we're seeing an increased salination of water, which also has health effects and is a risk factor for um, hypertension. Uh, this is exemplified in slide number 10, the next slide, which uh, illustrates the impacts of salt water intrusion, um, which is increasing the risk of preeclampsia and gestational hypertension in these coastal populations in Bangladesh, associated with increasing water um, sodium concentrations exceeding the internationally recommended levels. And this uh, seems to be increasing the risk, as I say, of adverse pregnancy outcomes in wi li women living in these coastal populations. Moving on to slide number 11, goal number seven. This links back to the earlier um, discussion of air pollution, because as we've already heard, access to modern, affordable, reliable and modern energy services is an important um, uh, contribution to ill health. And um, goal number seven specifically mentions the need to substantially increase the share of renewable energy in the global energy mix so that more affordable solar power, and I know that India has just launched an initiative to make solar energy more um, affordable. India is playing a leadership role in this global initiative, and that will be crucial in years to come to drive down the cost of solar energy both photovoltaics, but also solar thermal and solar, solar concentrating power. Uh, moving on to the next slide, which is um, about goal number slide number 12, which is about goal number 11. And this is about making cities and human settlements inclusive, safe, resilient and sustainable. We've already heard the importance of improving road safety, importantly by um, implementing road traffic regulations and legislation around the world, but also by expanding affordable and clean public transport. And that can help to contribute to reducing the level of ambient 
particulate matter in cities, which, I've, as I've already mentioned, um, is a major cause of ill health. Next slide, slide 13, illustrates the ways in which, by ensuring access for all to adequate, safe and affordable housing, including basic services and upgrading slums, we can improve human health. So that includes by providing affordable water and sanitation, solar lighting to replace, for example, kerosene lamps, which we know are highly polluting. They produce fine particles of black carbon, which contribute to climate change, but also contribute to ill health, particularly for women and children. And solar lamps are an affordable alternative. Um, clean cookstoves, I've already mentioned, as a potential uh, solution to household air pollution. Creating more sustainable and resilient um, uh, houses, for example, uh, this illustration shows you how building slides, uh, how building house, uh, houses to reduce flooding, uh, the flooding risk by putting them, uh, elevating them above ground, can also contribute, and also uh, making housing. Uh, less uh, permeable to disease vectors such as the mosquitoes that transmit malaria and dengue fever uh, by putting, for example, screens on windows and doors can also contribute um, to reducing uh, malaria and dengue fever. So moving on to slide 14, as we've heard, one of the goals is to reduce uh, the vulnerability to disasters and there's increasing evidence that we outline in our Lancet Planetary Health report that ecosystem strategies can increase disaster resilience. And there are a number of examples of these. One of them is helping to preserve and protect wetlands that can act as a kind of buffer to tidal waves and to storms, for example, by protecting coastal communities. Mangroves um, can reduce the intensity of wave intensity from storms and tidal waves and it can also help to protect coastal fisheries and coastal communities as can intact coral reefs, which coral reefs um, provide um, home to many fish uh, that can be exploited by human populations. Goal 14 is about conserving and sustainably using the oceans and we know that about 90% of um, capture fisheries are fully or excessively exploited. And so creating um, sustainable aquaculture will be an important contribution uh, to human nutrition, including to the intake of omega-3 um, fatty acids, which, as we know, have a protective effect on ischemic heart disease. Goal 15 is about protecting and restoring the sustainable use of terrestrial ecosystems, and we know that an, a growing number of strategies to protect these systems can also um, protect health by, for example, reducing forest fires, land clearing, which contributes to air pollution, uh, but also um, protects clean water sources and reduces the transmission of vector-borne diseases. Slide 17 illustrates the importance of indicators, which can act as a management tool for countries they can act as a national report card. They can stimulate investment in national statistical systems and household surveys and remote sensing. And they can allow for disaggregation so that we can determine whether inequalities, either socioeconomic or gender or age-based, are increasing or dis dis decreasing. So the data for these core indicators should be widely available, reliable and good coverage. And they can stimulate the capacity to analyze and report on these data by the academic sector and by non-governmental organizations. So the final slide, slide 18, really just summarizes this concept of planetary health, which we outline in our commission report. Put very simply, planetary health is the health of human civilizations and the state of the natural systems on which it depends. And the sustainable development goals offer an opportunity to bring together data on human health and on natural systems in a way which can give us a kind of comprehensive perspective um, on planetary health and allow us to determine whether ad advances in human health are sustainable or not, or whether because of unsustainable patterns of socioeconomic development, we may undermine the advances in human health which have occurred in recent decades and are continuing to occur occur around the world. So um, I will stop there.
and hopefully we still have one or two minutes left for any questions. Thank you very much.